Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Kathy. I haven't seen you in forever. So nice to see you. See you too. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing so many great faces that I haven't seen in a long time. Oh, wow, yeah. Hello, everybody. Careful. Hey. We won't have a full of tonight. Hello, how's everybody doing? Hello. Hold up your door again if you have one. I want to see uh see what everybody's got. Some different models. All right. All over the place. Love it. Love it, love it. Um, I am gonna keep everybody on mute right now. If you want to stay and hang out for a little bit afterwards, that way the people who want to like tune in and um, jump out the door, they can, uh, they can do that. And then if you want to stay on and ask questions, as soon as I go through the demonstration, then I will unmute and we can, um, we can chat more about this amazing device that will change your life. Um, let's see, I think, I think almost everybody, I think some people might be running late, but um, that's okay. We can always review everything. Um, so let me just do preliminary. Um, I am not sponsored by Coravent. I own no stock in Coravent. I make no money if we sell a million Coravents. Um, so this is truly just an honest recommendation from me to you because I really think it will change your life. The only way that I am um, making money or benefiting from everyone getting and using a Coravent frequently is because if everyone's using a core event frequently, then they will be more likely to tune into my virtual classes because opening up four bottles of wine on a night won't be an issue. You're not gonna have to uh, pour any wine down the drain. So I guess there is some sort of benefit is that uh, there's more people likely to join in on the virtual classes if there's not the same commitment of like, ah, four bottles open in one night and then let me end up pouring mine down the drain or getting way too drunk and hungover. So um, that is, I guess, part of the goal. But really the goal is um, just to highlight something that I really think will change how you drink wine, how you enjoy wine. For me, I like a certain wine while I'm cooking. I like a different wine for like the first part of my meal. And then I want a different wine at the end of my meal when I'm just sitting and drinking. So I'm by myself. I don't want to open up one wine and drink the same big red all throughout the night. I want to drink a nice uh, light white while I'm cooking. And I want to drink the right kind of red with the meal. Then afterwards, I'm done with that meal. And I want a big, luscious, sexy, chocolatey red wine. And that's uh, three different bottles of wine that I'm not going to open up all in one night. So it will change your life in that way to allow you the flexibility of trying multiple different wines in one night without fear of needing to pour wine down the drain. Now, you can watch a lot of these videos online, including demonstrations from Corbin website themselves. Like they'll do training videos and stuff like that. What I'm gonna give you is some of the pitfalls and tricks that I've learned along the way to make sure that um, I don't waste the argon gas because um, that's the most expensive part about this thing, oddly enough, and that um, the bottles stay as good as possible. I will warn you, I'm using Corvin Model 1. This is the plastic version, Corvin Model 1. I'm a big klutz, so I figured it was better for me to buy the cheaper and the plastic to really see if it was worth buying this Corvin, because I've used it for a couple years at a restaurant um, that I worked at, um, but doing it by myself and investing that much money, I wanted to make sure it was worth it. So I just bought the Corbin Model 1. They no longer sell regularly the Corbin Model 1 now. Now they've kind of jumped up to like number three. Model 3 is their kind of entry tier model. They go all the way up to Model 11 right now, which is a uh, small $800 for a contraption. Um, that's, that's really, the really issue between all of these different models is just slight differences between how the clamp works. So this has a clamp that you kind of have to open a little bit more forcefully. It's not as fluid and easily. I have to press the trigger while I'm using it. 
The Model 11, it's almost like you look at it and it works, but all of them work the same way. The science is the same. And so basic science, and then we'll get into how to use it. Um, you have a needle right here. So this is the needle. The needle is attached to the actual core of end device. This is the trigger right here that depresses the argon gas. If you have one of the really fancy models, they don't even have a trigger anymore. It's almost just like a, a button that you press right here. This right here is the canister. If I were to unscrew uh, this, which I'm not gonna do until the very end because I'll lose the argon gas. If I were to unscrew this, then, um, then the actual argon gas canister is right inside. So we'll talk about that at the very end. I'm at the end of my argon gas. So I wanna demonstrate first fully before I lose anything and uh, lose the ability to demonstrate. And afterwards I'll demonstrate how to change out the canister because that scared me the first time I did it. Then you have the clamp and then you have this, which is just like a, um, what do you call this? A slide basically that the clamp goes up and down. The idea is that the wine needle is hollow, and so you're gonna be able to access the wine from the needle, but then it's going to replace the space that's taken because the wine is removed. The space that's left in the bottle needs to be replaced by something. It needs to be replaced by something that's the same pressure, the same atmospheric pressure unit as oxygen, as we have here in our atmosphere so that it doesn't make the bottle explode. That's a key point, not exploding bottles. Nobody wants that. But you also need something that's not going to react with the wine. So you need a noble gas, um, if you remember your chemistry classes. So argon is one of those noble gases, it's probably the cheapest and easiest to manufacture and to harvest. Um, and so argon gas it is. So argon gas is in the canister. So as you depress this trigger, it's going to basically like suck some argon gas out of the canister and push it through the needle into the wine bottle, replacing that space that you've taken from the wine. So the more you press that needle, the more wine is going to flow. So if you only want a little bit of wine, you only need to do a little, just a tiny little depression of the trigger. If you want a big man majama eight ounce glass of wine, you need to hold that down for a while. So what I'm gonna go over is how to use this, how to use it best so that you don't have to replace those argon gas canisters as, uh, as frequently, and how to make sure that your bottles last as long as possible. I will give one, one uh, disagreement that I have with the Corbin website. They say that after you access the wine, then your bottle is good for years to come. Um, that has not been my experience with the Corbin and I've been using it for about five years now and I've learned all of the best tips and tricks. I have found that you're really good for like up to four to six months maximum before I start noticing a change in the wine. And to practice that, I'm going to open up, I've got four different bottles of wine that I Corvin between November and December of last year. So we're gonna use those to demonstrate and then I'm gonna taste them. And I will let you know if they taste as good as they did back in November and December. We're also tonight going to be talking about using a screw cap adapter. So obviously a needle is not gonna go through the steel of the screw cap or the Stelvin enclosure if you wanna be really fancy, but they make these really cool Corvin screw cap adapters. So you're gonna take off the screw cap, put on the adapter, and then this adapter has like this little kind of, um, what is this, a uh, rubbery kind of texture right there that the, that the needle can pierce. So we're gonna practice that. I've never used this before, so we're gonna practice it on a cheap bottle of wine that I don't mind if I uh, cook with it afterwards. And then to see how long it lasts, I'm gonna put it on this really nice bottle of Washington State Cabernet, Chenet and Cabernet, if you remember from my virtual class recently. And I will email you all uh, once in, uh, in one week and in two weeks to let you know if the wine tastes just as good. So I'll continue to do my own little self experiment to let you know whether or not those screw cap adapters are worth their weight in um, wine. <laughs> so, all right, if you have your Corbin, um, after I do the demonstration, what I'll do is um, we'll jump on and we'll do questions and you can practice it. You do have to make sure that it is a real cork. So they say, 
They say that you don't actually need to remove the foil to use the Coravin. I also don't enjoy that process because the foil can sometimes be very thick, depending on some of these older bottles or especially European bottles. That foil is so thick that I have found that it actually dulls the sharpness of the needle. It can slightly bend the needle right here. So I really don't recommend keeping the foil on. There's no point in the foil really that's um, really to keep mold out of if you're you know, using some you know, serious aging and some special sellers, but there's really no point in the foil. So you can just remove the foil. I also like that too, because that makes me remember which wines that I have already used a Coravin on. I remember one time I had like multiple bottles of a wine. I Coravin one to make my review and sample it. And then I sold the rest of it, but I got it mixed up, which one I had Coravin and which one. So someone in their package got this bottle of already accessed wine and I had to like email them all and let them know. I was like, I'm sorry, I will replace it. So just to make sure that you know, take the foil off and leave these wines in a separate part so that you don't get them mixed up with anything else. You kind of are aware of when they need to be used. So let's get going. I'm going to start off with this 2014 vintage Chianti. The corks for Italian wines, especially older Italian wines, are so hard. Sometimes with older wine, you want to be careful about using the Coravin because if it's too soft, then the, the cork isn't going to reseal. The whole science behind this is as the needle pierces it, we understand argon gas replaces it, all good. But once you remove the needle, cork is naturally elastic. So it's going to kind of expand out again to reseal itself so that no oxygen is getting back into the wine. Problem is the older wine gets, just like humans, the older we get, the more we lose our elasticity. So any older bottles, basically I recommend seven years or older do this trick. Push your finger on the cork and if you find it soft or spongy or it, or it moves down in the bottle a little bit, do not use the Coravin. And in fact, just open that bottle right away because it's probably not going to last that much longer. So this wine though, the cork is very hard still. So we're all good. I'm going to pull up the handle. So you want the clamp to be at the bottom near the cartridge and pull up the handle right here. I'm going to then clamp the uh, clamp on the neck of the bottle to make sure that it's on the right spot. Before I let the clamp go, I want the needle to be flush with the top of the cork. So if you see this, the clamp is still not on, but the needle is now flush with the top of the cork. So now I'm gonna let the clamp go and now we're ready to go. So this is better to do on a flat surface, but to get the access, I'm gonna, I'm holding it in the air, which is awkward. So, um, so now you're gonna slowly depress. So you can hold it like this, you can hold it like this. It's best to like hold it the most secure way possible. You don't wanna push way too hard, especially with an older cork. Um, uh, you don't wanna to press too hard because you don't wanna start bending that cork. The cork is, I mean, sorry, bending the needle. The cork is too hard. The needle itself could bend and um, the needles are replaceable, totally fine, but you know, might not. All right, fabulous. This cork was very difficult to penetrate. So all the way down now, we are good to go. So now the cork has been pierced by the needle itself. So now I want to hold my wine on its side. In fact, all right, y'all. Pardon me, I'm going to move my computer because I realized this is not where I want everything uh, in the way. All right, I'm going to have to, there we go. This is actually much better. So that way everyone can see better. All right. So, two, man, I need like a whole big camera setup for this thing. So now the bottle, you want to, you don't have to pour it all the way like this. You can just pour it this horizontal. You basically just want to make sure that the wine has covered the cork itself on the bottom. So I'm gonna depress the uh, top of the trigger uh, right here. The longer I depress it, the longer I press that trigger, the more argon gas is gonna shoot in, which is going to make more wine come out. 
So if I just want a tasting, a quick depression, I'm talking like a, you know, a quarter of a second, we'll pour out quite a bit of wine. Now it doesn't look like much is coming out because it pours out very slowly. That's okay. It's gonna actually pour out for a long amount of time and you don't want to waste the argon gas. So I'm going to get as much wine out of that little depression as possible because if I stop the wine flow, then that means that argon gas that I pushed into the wine can't all fit in there because all the wine hasn't come out. So it's gonna be released out, which means that I've wasted it. And these cartridges are expensive. So as soon as it starts just single dripping, I'm gonna go. So that little half a second pour gave me, these are huge glasses, but um, it gave me about an ounce and a half of wine. So quite a bit of wine. Now I will tell you, the more full the bottle is, so this is all the way full, the more you will have to depress the trigger to get that wine flow going. As soon as you get to about here in the wine, a little depression will get you six ounce glass, no problem. But the very beginning, I thought for a long time that I was doing something wrong, that like I shouldn't be using this much argon gas because I was having to press the argon gas so much just to get a tiny bit of wine out of a new bottle. But as soon as it starts, you know, about a glass taken out, then a small depression will get you plenty of wine. So to demonstrate that, let's see here. We'll go to the tasting in just a second. So to remove this, you don't have to unclamp it. Un, it will unclamp itself. You're just gonna hold the bottle very steadily and pull up the Corvin. And there we go. So now the Corvin is out. You want to do this right away. If you leave the Corvin, in the bottle past when it needs to be, you're going to basically make that hole more impossible for it to reseal. So um, if I left that in there for 15 minutes, it's gonna take that much longer for it to reseal, which means you're introducing more oxygen to the wine, which is what we don't want to happen. So the whole point of the core of it to not introduce oxygen to the wine. Now that the wine has, uh, now that I've removed the core of it from the wine, I have a little bit of red wine on my needle, inside my needle, and a little bit of oxygen too. Before I ever use this again, I want to depress the trigger to expel a little bit of argon gas just into the air to make sure that there's no extra wine or oxygen inside that needle before I use it again. I do not do this right after I pull it out unless I am going straight into another bottle. So if I were only using it once for the night, I'd pour the wine, remove this, maybe just take a napkin or a paper towel and wipe off the outside of the needle. The next day, before I use the Coravin, I'm gonna do a little spritz, just like this. You know, just a tiny bit. I don't know if you could hear that little but that's about all that it should sound. Now, if you've just used it, um, it will spritz a little bit of wine uh, so just make sure that you're not doing it with a white silk shirt anywhere near. So I wanna do that before I use it on this bottle because I don't want to introduce any oxygen or red wine into this white wine that I'm about to pour. So we're gonna practice this again. The, uh, what's this called? The uh, lever, what did I call it though before? Lever, clamp. <laughs> the clamp is on the bottom. We're gonna unclamp it. We are going to put the needle flush with the top of the cork and clamp it down. Push it down slowly. This wine is not as old. The cork is young, so it's easier. Now, same thing. I'm gonna hold it on its side. And now you'll see, I'm gonna do the exact same depression, the exact same amount of argon gas, but because it's a brand new bottle, it won't pour as much wine. So, same amount. And instead of an ounce and a half, I'm getting like a, an eighth of an ounce or something like that. So just that much. Don't worry, because if I do it again, each time I depress the trigger, I'm gonna get a little bit more wine. So at the very brand new bottle, sorry, admitting more people into the waiting room. The very beginning of the bottle, it is just easier to depress several times to get the maximum amount of wine, but not waste any gas. So that's basics of just how to do the first kind of uh, the pours of the wine. Let's remove this again. All right.
easy peasy. Let's give this uh, 2014 Chianti a swirl. I opened this um, beginning of November. So now November, December, January, so it's about three and a half months. I remember it tasted when I first tasted it, I wrote my notes down that it seemed like it was a little like on its peak, kind of almost close to being more past its prime. It doesn't smell like any extra oxidative quality. So it doesn't smell like there's too much oxygen in the wine. It hasn't, hasn't gone bad that way. The wine is gorgeous. So three months later, the bottle was only um, tasted up to this point. So it's not like I had accessed it multiple times. That wine is still gorgeous. So you know, three months later, stored well, that is exactly how long it should take. Now, how do you store the bottles after you've used the Coravin? This has a hole in it now. And so if we store them on its side, you will see, especially the older the wine, the colder the wine. Um, so the harder it is for that cork to be elastic and reseal, the more it's going to take, the longer time it's going to take to reseal. You still want to store it on its side, but don't be nervous that you see a few drips of wine come out there. Better that than storing it upright and it not being resealed so that oxygen is being allowed to get into the wine. I'd rather lose two drops of wine than lose the whole bottle because I stored it upright. And while that hole was still open before it was resealing, you just have that introduction of oxygen to the wine. So as soon as I pour in wine, I put it on its side. And yes, um, if you've got a really fancy setup for your wine bottles, then maybe just put a napkin underneath or something like that, just to make sure that those drips don't stain any fancy marble or anything like that. I don't have that. Everything in my house is wine stained. So that's all, I don't need to worry about that. So that's how you reseal it afterwards. I'm gonna talk real quickly about the two di the different types of needles. And then we're gonna talk about how to clean your Coravin, when to clean it. So what I use, which is what was recommended to me um, a couple of months ago. So I gave it a try. Um, I use a vintage needle. So I'm gonna unscrew this. So to clean your needle, to replace your needle, anything like that, you just wanna unscrew the needle from the top. If the clamp is down at the bottom, then the needle is now unscrewed and you can kind of just like wiggle it to the side. So the vintage needle is thinner than the regular needle. So vintage is supposed to, the vintage needles are better for older corks. So you want the smaller hole, or if you're gonna pierce your cork regularly, and so you wanna make sure that, um, that the cork reseals itself. It pours out a lot slower though. So I don't recommend this if you're really impatient and if you're going to be using up your bottle of wine within a matter of a week or two weeks, no need to use a vintage cork. I will show you, I'm sorry, a vintage needle. I'll show you the other needles. So they come in this little three pack here. And by the way, all of this will go up on YouTube. So you don't have to worry about if, if you miss anything. There's this other needle, which you probably can't tell from here, but it's actually a lot thicker and it's called the fast pour needle. So if you're working in the restaurant industry and you just need a faster pour, or if you're really impatient like I am, then that's just going to allow the wine to get out faster. But again, that's not going to make for the same amount of shelf life of these Corvind wines afterwards. Then you just have your regular classic needle, which is what most people use all the time, which is what the Corvins come with unless you've bought these extra needles. Totally fine unless you're drinking older wines or Corvinning a lot of wines or saving these wines for months and months and months. I don't think it's necessary to buy the vintage needle, but if you are Corvinning older bottles of wine, it really will make a difference. So I use the vintage needle on everything, honestly, and I just deal with how slow it goes out. All right, so that's how to, that's about the needle. So to replace it, just grab the new, the new needle. You're gonna push it through the hole in the clamp side, pull it in there and um, slide it up into the actual canister or um, handle area and just twist tight. If you use the Coravin on unfiltered wine, it has a lot of sediment in it, 
then sometimes, like what happened to me in a private event that I did on Saturday, the needle itself can get clogged with that sediment. So it seems like the cartridge is empty, but it's not because the cart the it, there's still plenty of gas, but the needle has gotten clogged. So all of your all of your um, I think everybody's in here now. All of your Corbin contraptions will come with this needle. So um, it just comes on this little paper. Don't throw this away. You might think you will never need it. You will need it. So you just take the needle out, push the needle through the other needle, and it will push the sediment out the very bottom where there is the hole um, that is hollow. So that's how you clean up the cork. Sometimes it takes, or the sediment from the needle. Sometimes it takes a few rounds of that to really get it. And sometimes I have to run water through it too. If I've used the cork, uh, the Corvin on something that has a lot of sediment. So that's all about the needle. All right, I've just put this uh, needle back in there. It's just the vintage needle that I replaced it with. And I'm gonna do, one more practice round with one other wine. I brought a friend over here tonight to help me drink all these wines because as I do all these practice rounds, uh, last time I ended up drinking about a bottle of wine in 45 minutes <laughs> because during the class I ran out of glasses and I didn't have a dump bucket so I just kept drinking. I'm not going to do that this time. So this wine right here I opened up back at work Coravend back in October. So let's see how we're doing. It's a um, 2017 Vacaras, so a Southern Rhone wine. Cork is still good. So again, I'm gonna unclamp, needle goes flush to the cork, clamp, push down slowly but surely, hold it sideways, depress. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to clean out the needle. I forgot to do that quick depression before I did this, which means a little bit of oxygen got into this wine. It might not last as long as I want it to, which means I have to drink it. Maybe all tonight, we'll see. All right, so it's still pouring. So again, that one little depression, because I had already accessed this one time, got me a good one and a half, close to two ounces of wine. If it's still pouring, all you have to do if you wanna stop it pouring, so say it's still pouring, like I don't need any more wine, just tilt the wine horizontal again. You'll hear a and that's the argon gas being released out to the air. So you've just wasted a little bit of gas, but if you didn't need any more wine, that's good. That's all you needed to do. Wow, this wine is not bad. It is still clean, definitely not oxidized. It's a little bit of a funky wine for sure. Beautiful. So back in October, I opened this, no problem whatsoever. I generally find that after six months, I start being able to really notice a difference in the, in the taste of the wine. But up until then, I think you're totally secure. So we're just gonna pull it up, unclamp it to release, and we are good to go. Last thing I wanna do before we, I'll, um, I'll ask for questions before we go on to the screw cap adapter but I want to show how you can pour two glasses of wine without moving the bottle up and basically losing some gas. So not two bottles, sorry, two glasses of wine. So again, like I forgot to do last time because it's hard on camera, I'm gonna depress the trigger a little bit just to clean that needle. It sounded like there was some wine stuck in there, so I did it again. Now we're all clean. Now I'm going to try this other bottle of wine, which was, I guess, about in October as well. Um, at all times in my house, there's plenty of open wine. That's why I don't tell anybody where I live. Um, all right, so open the clamp. Needle flush. Close the clamp. Slowly press down. Now to get, if, I, if I'm going to do one little depression, I know I'm going to get two ounces out of it because the bottle's half gone. So I don't need to press very hard to get quite a bit of wine. But every time I hold it like this, I'm going to lose that gas before I press it again. So if you're pouring, so a little depression, now it's going. If you're pouring in midstream, 
you want to change to a new glass and not lose any of the argon gas. You want to hold the trigger down just halfway. Don't press it down all the way because that's going to insert more oxygen, I mean, more argon gas into the bottle. So you want to depress the trigger just halfway, just until the flow stops. So basically, you've just stopped everything from happening. Don't move the bottle horizontal, just move it to the next glass of wine, release the trigger, and you'll get the same flow without having to introduce more argon gas to the wine. Um, I did not uh, depress, I, I'm losing my gas now. So, uh, so it's taking more gas to get uh, the same amount of wine. And that brings me to the final question, which I know everyone's asking, how long do these damn canisters last? And uh, here's how long they last, as long as you let them. It's not a matter of time. So if I put the argon canister into my core event, it's not like in two months, it will have depleted itself. If I don't use it at all, it's totally fine. If you use it every day, like I do, then you're gonna go through a lot of canisters. They say that you can pour about 15 full glasses of wine with one cartridge. If you use it very judiciously, like I've taught you to tonight, to not be extra spritzing and um, you know losing the gas with each pour, then you are good for that. Um, I don't ever pour full glasses of wine. Usually I'm pouring two ounces at a time. And so, yeah, I use it about, about every 30 tastings, I have to replace the canister. I buy them in bulk, a hundred at a time. Um, so that's the cheapest way to do it. But the canisters are pretty expensive. So you do want to make sure you're doing everything to conserve those. How do you know that the gas is gone? Well, simple. if you spritz, if you spritz this to clean it out before you use it and you don't hear a tss, then the canister is empty. So um, it, it's, just, uh, it's just empty. Now, if you know it's not empty because you just changed it and you spritz it and don't hear that, it's most likely because that needle is clogged with sediment like we talked about. So just grab your needle, um, clean out the needle with the smaller needle. Speaking of cleaning, I recommend that about once a week, if you use this on a regular or about every few times, um, just clean the whole thing out, hot water, no soap, obviously, just really hot water. I kind of run the whole core of in under some hot water from the sink and then let it air dry. Don't fully submerge it, but I just run it under hot water because what happens is as the wine kind of gets throughout the core of in and dries out the sugars from the wine, because there are minuscule amounts of sugars from the wine, the sediment, all that texture kind of dries up, makes it harder for any of the parts to move well. So the best way to do that is just to run it under hot water on a regular basis so you don't have any of that buildup. Final tasting, let's see how this Valpolicella did. Oh, it smells delightful. Definitely not oxidized. I forgot to spit, but it's delicious. Yep, so all of these bottles so far have been absolutely perfect and um, I wouldn't change a thing. So. I know I've talked really fast. Um, that's because I wanted to get as much information out there as possible. Before I go into the screw cap adapters, I will take some questions if you have some. If you wanna just like hit the space bar um, so that you can um, ask your question, please let me know. Sandy, I see you uh, waving around. So hold on, Sandy, we can't hear you. Press your space bar so you can unmute yourself. You have to like hold it down, I think, or just, un or just press your- Okay, is that better? Okay. Yeah. Um, mine's brand new out of the box. It does not have a canister in it. Okay, great. So take that canister. Can you hold up the core then? Yeah, so I kind of figured out, I unscrew this. Great. Now I just like to flip it upside down. So put the flip it upside down after you've taken this off. Now I can't take mine off because I'll lose all of the gas. It goes down like this. Yeah. Yep. Put it right in there. So that black part goes into the black part. Great, you don't have to screw it or anything. It just sets in. As oh. you twist the bottom of the canister into the core vent, it will push the canister to its open state. Do you hear that pop? Uh-huh. Yep. So okay. as you hear that pop, it's basically access. It's like accessing super glue where you just like that seal needs to be popped on the outside. Right. 
got wine all over my shirt. So it's, you know, it's a good Tuesday night. <laughs> now go ahead and give it a spritz. Let's see if you hear it. Yep. Yeah. Yay. Now you can use it. All right. Any other questions? I've got one, Kara. How many times, sorry, ignore the toddler in the background. Um, how many times can you actually Coravan like the same bottle? Great question. Sorry, forgot to bring that up. They say about 25 times, which there's only 25 ounces in a bottle of wine. So I can't understand why you would ever need to core in a bottle 25 times. I say that this is when I want to open it. Um, I've already, so there's basically four glasses, four Kira size glasses in a bottle of wine, uh, five restaurant pours. Um, but after it gets about half empty, um, then just open the bottle of wine. There's only two more glasses in it. Um, definitely when, by the time it gets to, there's only a third left in the bottle. It's not that the Coravin won't work. It's just, you're wasting gas and you might as well just open it up and pour that last glass of wine. Um, unless you absolutely need to save two ounces for your best friend and she's coming, but she, she's you know not gonna get here till next week. So unless you absolutely need to, don't waste the gas on coraventing it when your bottle gets to about a third empty. But they say you can, a cork can be pierced about 25 times. The older the cork is, the fewer the times it can be pierced. So about five to seven years old, start using that coravin more judiciously than you would a younger cork. Great question. What other questions are out there? And then I can talk about uh, Amanda. Yeah, Kira, you said that, <laughs> you, said that it, uh, you have to be using a natural cork. Is that right? It, so we'll, using one of the rubber, rubbery corks or plus it'll mess it up? Yeah, so the real, it's not going to screw up the coravin. Um, I mean, it might bend your needle depending on, you know, if you use it on a glass cork, it'll definitely <laughs> not work well. Um, but if you use one of those rubber corks, they're just not elastic. So they're not going to reseal. So the coravin needle will go through it. Um, as we'll see with the Coravin, the screw cap adapters, this is like rubber, it's gonna go straight through. No problem. Um, it's just not gonna reseal, so uh, what's the point? So um, great question. And no, you cannot use it on sparkling wine. First of all, there's that metal cap. It can't get through that. Second of all, this argon gas is pressurized to be the same atmospheric units as our normal atmosphere, which is 1.5 atmospheric pressure units. Inside a bottle of sparkling wine, you're at seven atmospheric pressure units. So it will cause an explosion in the bottle. Um, so please don't do that. Um, don't try and use it with uh, sparkling wine. But great question. You can get the needle through a synthetic cork, um, a rubber cork, a plastic cork. Now, that doesn't mean that if it's a composite cork, you know, like one of those corks where like it's, it's real cork, it's just kind of all the pieces glued together, almost like plywood kind of thing. You can use it on that, that will reseal itself, but it's, it's those full rubber or plastic corks that it will not work. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. So I Any just other put questions? mine on a brand new bottle and right? when I turned it and pushed the thing, you hear the flush, yep. you let go and it's coming out pretty fast, but okay. then it stops fairly quickly. Once it stops, then, so you might just have a different, um, a different needle. You might want to have one of those fast core needles. So it's going to come out faster than my vintage needle did. But once it stops, if you want more wine, just depress the trigger again. Okay. So yours didn't come out very fast and very much because it was half empty or? No. So I have the vintage needle and that's what I use for everything. So the needle's really thin. So it allows for a very tiny stream of wine to go through. If you use the regular needle that all the Corvins come with, or if you have one of those fast pour needles, you're going to get a much faster flow of the wine and it will stop faster too. Um, I just use the vintage needle because I, um, I use it on a lot of old corks. <laughs> so, um, okay. but great question. Well, it, seemed like each time I, it seemed like each time I did it, more wine came out. Exactly. So. That's why when we did it, the, um, that, that one bottle of white wine that I tried that was brand new, that first pour, I held it down for like a couple of seconds and I still only got about a third of an ounce of wine. Then the second pour, I got a little bit more. more. So okay. As the bottle empties, it'll take less and less argon gas to get more wine out of each little spritz. 
Okay. Great question. I'm not sorry, gonna, I missed the beginning. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. I'm gonna post this on um on uh YouTube if I did my do yes, I did I am recording it. So I'm gonna post it on YouTube. So if you need to watch it again to remember any of this stuff, it will go up on YouTube. It'll okay, always so be the speaker view. Then you just pull it out. Yep. So now just pull the handle straight out. Sometimes that's actually the hardest part. And sometimes when I do that, like wine kind of like spritzes all over me. So um, I got to be a little careful. Okay, great. Brilliant. You did it. So, right, anybody? Yes? so should I do it, spritz it to spray the wine out of there or do I just leave I it? I wouldn't do that just yet. I always, because otherwise, if you spritz it before, I mean, sorry, if you spritz it right after you pull it out, and also before you put it into the next time, then you're losing twice the amount of argon gas. Okay. You're already kind of using some gas by doing a little spritz to clean out the needle. I don't want to use double the amount of gas for no reason. So I only spritz at before I put it into the next cork um, instead of right after. Or if, if you're done for the night. Yes, yeah. Or no, 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 before I start for the next day. If there's a little bit of wine, you get rid of it, just a, a napkin, a paper towel, or some or some hot water, but don't waste any more argon gas. But there shouldn't be any inside. There shouldn't be any wine inside the needle. No, I mean, minuscule, minuscule amounts. Okay. Um, but that's what you don't want to go into your next bottle of wine, for sure. Okay. All right, anyone else who has questions, and then I'll get to the uh, screw cap adapter, and we'll do a little experimentation. Okay. Awesome. So, Virginia can start drinking. <laughs> if you want. Um, all right. So, screw cap adapters come like this. They literally look like screw caps. Um, there's the one with the white top and one with the black top. Um, they're two different sizes. If you've ever noticed trying to put a cork into some screw caps, some screw caps are wider on the mouth than others. So the black one is a little bit larger. The white one is a little bit smaller. So it has all this information. If you should choose to buy these screw cap adapters, they say some pretty extravagant claims with these things. They say that once you put it on the bottle, you can pierce that same bottle, again, about 25 times without losing any integrity of the wine, I mean, of the screw cap adapter. And then you can reuse this. So this individual cork or screw cap adapter can be pierced by the core of a needle 50 total times. I am going to run these experiments and let you know if I find that to be true or not, but let's try. So I have heard from someone that uses one regularly that the trick is to have your screw cap right here so that by the time you unseal this, the screw cap adapter can go on immediately. So no, like as little as possible oxygen is getting into the bottle. Don't take it off, pour yourself a sample, take a sip and then put this adapter on. You want to do this as quick as possible, almost one of those like sleight of hand tricks like at a circus, you know, when, when they move the ball from one hand to the next and you don't, and you can't even tell it. So I've unsealed this. <laughs> Okay, I got a little too aggressive with how fast I was doing, but then I realized the black did not fit. So a good thing I had the white handy. Um, this is a smaller cap, apparently. Um, so you don't need to seal this to the point where you, you, you're gonna twist your hand or something. And I said, don't worry about that. Seal it tight, but don't worry about, you know, putting a, a Loctite on it or anything like that. So now this is on. Again, before I use this, I always went to spritz to clean it out. And that's why I have so many glasses set up on my table tonight. Um, all right, let's give this a whirl. So this is all metal right here, or hard plastic, sorry, not metal. But right on the inside is where the needle should go, and that's a soft rubber. If this is the inside of the screw cap. It has that like same almost styrofoam seal that your screw cap does. And they say before you use it, you want to push the seal in just to make sure that in packaging that plastic, that styrofoam seal didn't come out. Um, yeah, all of mine seemed good. 
Yeah. So that's what they say to do beforehand. I had done this with this one beforehand, so we're all good. So you push that seal in, replace the screw cap really fast, unclamp, set it flush to that rubber cart clamp, slowly pour down. Oh, that goes really fast, all right. So it, I heard a little bit more like fuzziness, fizziness come out than I did, but it might just be because um, who knows? So, all right, I got about half an ounce of wine and it comes out pretty quickly. So again, I went to immediately put this wine on its side so that this synthetic cork, which is made to expand, will reseal. Um, this is cooking wine, so I don't need to worry about storing that correctly. Definitely cooking wine. <laughs> Not gonna sample that one. But to practice, I do think this is the larger screw cap, but we'll see. To practice this and to do a little self-experiment, I'm going to put the screw cap adapter on this really nice bottle of wine. So again, some people are like, why would you ever use a core of it on a screw cap? Well, for one, me, because even if it's a screw cap, I taste, you know, sometimes 10 wines a day. There's no way I'm gonna open up a bottle of wine just because it has a screw cap. I want to pour it down the drain because that might be not the wine I'm gonna drink all day. So, and sometimes, um, more and more these days especially, people are trying to be a little bit more environmentally friendly, a little bit more cautious with how they spend um, their resources. And so higher end wines, this is a $35 bottle of Cabernet, are using screw cap or Stelvin enclosures um, more often these days. So don't be thinking that screw cap or Stelvin enclosure means it's cheap wine. So, all right, I think it's, this looks like a bigger top than the other one, but we'll see. Ah! <laughs> this one just has a mind of its own. <laughs> All right. Yep, nope, that doesn't work. Man, I don't know what these use for then. Um, if you ever have a bottle that has an extra large screw cap or something on it, I guess that's what I use these for. I guess that's why they only gave me two of these, but four of the white ones. So it's more often this, this size. All right, let's see. <laughs> One more glass. Got a lot of dishes to do tonight. Spritz beforehand, get that cooking wine out of that needle. All right. I definitely, again, heard a little bit more like spritziness when I first started pouring this wine than I did with when I was using a regular cork. Um, so I'm not concerned about that yet, but we'll see what the example does and how this wine continues to change. It also drips a little bit more than I noticed with the regular cork. So wine gets everywhere, so be careful. Oh my gosh, this wine is so, so, so delightful. Really excited to um, see how that wine changes over the next couple of weeks. I will keep you posted. So expect an email from me in a week and again in two weeks. Um, and letting you know if it if it dies and I lose the whole bottle, I'll cry, but I'll email you and let you know that the screw cap adapters aren't all that they're cracked up to be. So count on an honest recommendation or feedback. Um, all right, so more questions. Anybody have more questions? I'm so sorry. I told everyone it was probably gonna be lasting 30 minutes, but and I tried to talk really fast, but as always, they uh, they last longer than uh, than I think. So I think I missed it. Are you going to turn the um, the one with the screw cap adapter on its side too? Yes. yes. Great question. Sorry. And I just saw that in the, ch in the, in the chat room. You are going to store this on its side. White wine stored on the side in the fridge. Red wine on a wine rack or shelf or something like that. Um, and uh, yes. So you do want to make sure because there is a tiny hole, right? And so if it's upright and that tiny hole even for just 15 minutes, is letting minuscule amounts of oxygen into the wine. So this is what you want to do to make sure that that hole is plugged, basically. And the only thing that's coming in, like there might be, you know, one tiny little particle of oxygen that gets into the wine, but that's about it. I will let you know that the first time I used a Coravin, no one can, no one can have a bigger failure than me on this one. So the first time I used a Coravin, it was at a restaurant. As soon as we got this in, and that was when the Model 1s were $600 kind of craziness because it was the first model. 
there's patents out for this. So there's no generic, uh, generic uh, name brand. And so me and my boss were like, well, let's open up this, uh, not open up, let's taste this uh, $950 bottle of wine um, so that we know when it, when we have to pour it in, um, in 10 days, it was like a week and a half um, for this event that they were paying a lot of money for. Um, you know, we know what it tastes like. We'll just pour a little tiny little bit. I was like, great, let's do it. Incredible, right? I had, I had this much of the wine and it was, it was, it was, it was mind blowing. 10 days later, I uh, opened it up and it had fully oxidized. Like I'm talking like the bottle was left unopened on the shelf for a week and a half. That's how bad it was. So we lost a lot of money on that one mistake because I didn't spritz beforehand. So that oxygen um, basically that's in the needle got pushed into the wine um, that little bit and I didn't put on on side afterwards. So that hole left in the cork just allowed all that oxygen to continue flowing. Even if it was just for a little bit of time, it was an older cork. It was from uh, 2001, I think. So at 18 years old, that cork did not reseal very fast. And so in just that short amount of time and that short amount of oxygen, the entire bottle was ruined, a very expensive wine. So those are the tips and tricks that I've learned by mistake. So this was not stuff I had to learn uh, on an online training website. This was definitely stuff I've learned by making a lot of terrible mistakes. So don't make those mistakes. Um, what other questions does anyone have? Anyone, does anyone, does everyone here own a Coravin already or is anyone trying to figure out if it's worth it. Okay. Mine actually, I got probably at least a year ago and okay. I used it once and I was just really excited to hear that it still has a ton, you know, yeah. a lot of argon in it. it that's what I was, I was assuming it might leach yeah. out. Or, yeah, it's not a matter of time that how or how old it is. It's definitely just how often you use it, those, those argon gas containers. So you don't find yourself in the situation like I do sometimes where you run out of gas and you look and oh, you're out of gas uh, and, and you didn't buy any more canisters. Buy them in like packs of, I say three if you use it infrequently, six if you use it more frequently. And as soon as you, um, you know, only have one canister left, buy that next pack. Because if it's that one time you absolutely need it, that you can't afford to open that bottle of wine right away, and you just want a little sample, that's always when you run out of gas and there's no cartridges left. So um, Genevieve says, I'm trying to decide if it's worth it other than now starting to do the wine tastings with you basically, uh, drink the bottle once opened. Yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. Um, I believe that most things out there are wine gimmicks. When you go to Total Wine or you shop like anything wine related on Amazon, um, I don't believe in, in, in really anything. Um, aerators, yeah, they're fun and fancy, but nothing a decanter won't do. Even a decanter, don't, I don't recommend anyone get the fancy ones. Just, you know, a flower vase will work perfectly fine. So I would rather myself and i hope maybe you would too to spend all my money on fancier wines and less gimmicks and um uh, so the two things that i truly believe are not gimmicks are good glassware and the core event they're two things that um that I, I can't imagine living my wine life without it so great question amanda says how do you aerate it once you pour in it so i would recommend pour it into a decanter so say you want two glasses of wine um, cause you're doing my wine class and you want, you and John are both tasting it and both want a glass of wine for this class, but I recommend decant this wine for an hour. Either pour it into a glass and just keep swirling that wine aggressively, pour it in a decanter, swirl it aggressively. However you want to do it. Aerating is just about getting oxygen into the wine, which we're trying not to do for the whole bottle by using the Corbin, but for that one glass, you do want to do a little bit. So, um, just Corbin the sample that you want into a decanter, into a big glass, and do a lot of swirling. In a decanter, swirl it around a whole lot. That's all you need to do, so. Um, I, got, I got this ending to it. I don't know if that helps at all. It's like a little shower head. Yes, so if your Corvin came with one of those Corvin aerating adapters, awesome. Um, good on you, Sam, for getting you the nice <laughs> model, awesome. Um, then that basically, yes, 
then that basically is equal to like if you pour it through that i've never used one so i can't really demonstrate how to use that um, but that will basically be equal to about um, an, an hour of decanting. So again, you can't go backwards. If you if you think your wine only needs about 15 minutes of decanting, you pour it through an aerator and that gives it an hour of oxygen. You can't go backwards. So use it wisely and make sure you only use aerators on things that you know need that much time. Um, if anyone is on the fence and not sure, I bought two. Two, <laughs> two of these uh, Corbin Model 6s. I'm not even fancy enough to have a Model 6, but it comes with uh, three canisters, a couple screw cap adapters as well, um, this nice carrying case. And it's the really fancy one that doesn't even have the clamp. It's just like push and pour. And apparently it's like foolproof, amazing system. I bought them Black Friday sale. So these are normally $300 on their website. And um, I'm just passing along the discount. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that you all who want one feel like you can try one with, um, with freedom. So if anyone wants them, I've got two and I'll give you them the price that I got them for, which is 250. So $50 off the Corvin website sale. You can't buy them on Amazon or Corvin website for cheaper than 300. Um, but you get $50 off and that includes tax and I'll, um, I'll, I'll bring it to your house. So if you're interested in that, again, I just want people to use the Corbin so that they feel the freedom of being able to taste seven to 25 wines a night without fear of wine going bad or being poured down the drain. So you all have my information. Um, if you're interested in those two, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to save them on my shelf for when mine uh, goes bad, which after three years, it's still uh, still being used every day without problems. So um, not worried about that. Hi, Ada, just saw you just now, so hello. Any last minute questions before I let y'all go? Sorry, this uh, 30 minute class turned into an hour class. I do have a quick question. What yes, are the, please. What are the two bottles behind you that don't look like wine bottles? Oh, I have no idea. It's this liquor called 1970 or liqueur. It's like a cordial kind of a sweet liqueur. Um, my brother shipped it to me and um, on accident and then he said just keep it and so it's been sitting on my shelf for about a year now um, and I, I don't know what to do with it <laughs> so <laughs> I have no idea I'm not a, like a sweet cocktail kind of person so um, but they're really pretty and so I just leave them right now for uh, decorations until I have someone come over to my house at once one so <laughs> great question um, all right if there aren't any more questions, I wish you all the best of wine luck this week and uh, may you drink really fabulous wines and, um, and enjoy drinking more wines with confidence using this core event. If you ever run into a jam and can't remember what to do, you have my cell phone number. If you don't, here it is. That's my cell phone number. Text me at any time. It's always on silent if I'm a at an event or in bed. So don't worry about the time. Text me any wine related questions, not just related to core event. I am um, happy to be your SOM on speed dial. So, all right, until I see y'all again, maybe this weekend for Rhone Valley class. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.